Good evening, good evening, good evening. It is so, so wonderful to be back in this esteemed group to bestow upon some dear friends one of the most incredible honors that I could ever imagine. And I feel gifted being able to introduce you to this entire group tonight. And I have to give thanks to Ed, um, who was here earlier, accepting an award or making an introduction, actually, because he framed his comments around doors being opened. And I think each of us can clearly think back and realize that we would not be in many places that we're able to be or the accomplishments that we've been able to make had there not been many doors opened for us. And so I thank you, Ed, for laying the groundwork for my remarks that also speak to doors that have been opened by Will and Martina O'Sullivan. So it's an honor and a privilege to return to the gala as last year's recipient and to bestow upon two very deserving people this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. I will try to ensure that my comments are brief, but no, should I go a bit long, it is only because of the true richness of their story. A story of family, a story of love, of community, and justice, and undoubtedly, a story of how they opened many doors throughout their lives for so, so many. Some might say that the chance of them meeting and further to be on the eve of their 50th wedding anniversary was by chance. I would say that it was clear from the beginning that it was destiny. Martina was born in Lafayette, Louisiana, later moving to Detroit where her father opened a family business and she and her siblings attended St. Teresa Catholic School. It was here that she first met Father Bob Moran, who challenged young Martina to become involved in righting wrongs, and hence her commitment to justice and the civil rights movement was born. Will was born in Detroit, and the family moved to Dearborn and then Chicago as his father was a lifelong Ford Motor executive. Now, I hearken from Chrysler, <laughs> FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, and now Stellantis, but I love you, Will, still. <laughs> they later returned to the area to reside in Birmingham, and through his family, Will held firm to the belief not to take things for granted, and learn to embrace a sense of charity in whatever he did. His belief and commitment to justice began. They met by chance when Martina took a tour of Sacred Heart Seminary here in Detroit, where Will was preparing for a life of faith in the priesthood, having attended high school and college there. It was at Sacred Heart that he first heard Father Bob Moran speak about his work as a priest and said, I want to be like him. Coincidentally, Martina spent her first year of college at Siena Heights in preparation for a life of service as a Dominican sister. She ultimately received her bachelor's and master's degrees in social work from Wayne State University. In their love, they worked independently and collaboratively to open many doors to those in need, those in need, and they embarked on their respective careers. Martina started her social work career at the Detroit Public Schools to make a difference, and after moving to California, she joined Dominican Hospital and later Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Monterey, ultimately returning to her prior hospital to become the face of the hospital's connection to an array of health and human services in the country. And Will 
brought his commitment to justice to Detroit Recorder's Court as a probation officer and later moved to the federal court as a U.S. probation officer and then to California in a parallel position in San Jose. He closed out his career overseeing a Santa Cruz Substance Abuse Disorder Counseling Center. Now through many roles, both Will and Martina were instrumental in giving hope, instilling the realization that the doors of life could still be opened despite facing challenges. Will and Martina have cultivated a wonderful life for themselves. They are the parents of three beautiful daughters, Jennifer Suzanne, Meredith Lucy, and Ellen Claire. As young girls, they were truly the apple of their parents' eyes, and as young women, they framed their deep love for each of them to ensure that they were confident in who they were and fearless to walk through any door in order to realize their dreams. Their success was the byproduct, their self-confidence and strength of character the result. Take a listen. Jennifer Suzanne, their eldest daughter, is described by her parents as relationally brave. She started her business 15 years ago to provide strategic direction and marketing for nonprofits around the world. She and her husband, Chris, make their home in Newport Beach, but recently purchased a villa in Tuscany where the family will celebrate Will and Martina's 50th wedding anniversary this summer. Meredith Lucy is their middle daughter and has a very successful publicity firm, The Lead Company. Opening a door and breaking the glass ceiling, the firm is led by Meredith and three other dynamic women. Marie Claire named Lead Hollywood's hottest publicity firm, and she is described by her parents as a self-made person. She and her husband, John, have two boys, Miles, seven, and James, three, and they reside in Santa Monica. Ellen Claire, their youngest daughter, resides in the Big Apple. She manages talent for the Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show and has been with the show since Jimmy took over that role. Her parents shared that her gift is her unique ability to engage deeply with people. Ellen and her husband, Pete, have 10-month-old twins, August and Owen. Meredith and Ellen are here today. And I have to say to both of you and to Jennifer, how fortunate you were to have been instilled with such love and the belief that you could realize your dreams, and unquestionably, you did. So, full circle, our Life Search Circle members are all present here in spirit. This unique group of individuals came from a range of different life experiences and personal stories. Yet it was with faith, love, and wisdom that Father Bob Moran, the architect of this circle, was key to creating a bond that remains intact and incredibly strong to this day. But it was also Father Moran who asked Will and Martina to be present, present in the lives of those whose character was in formation, esteem was being cemented, and faith was being affirmed. To that, they responded with a resounding yes. They became, in fact, the catalyst of freedom, allowing our circle the opportunity to truly discover themselves and their gifts. A few thoughts for Will and Martina from the circle. They had a calming presence and a listening ear. Their example of true love and commitment was the reason we married. They were a safe harbor. They shared God's healing touch. They shared love 
that brought out the best in me and in others. And quite simply, they gave and loved unconditionally. So life directions, your circle, your family, your friends, and all in, in attendance today acknowledge your profound commitment and contribution to giving life and love to those in need across a spectrum of humanity. And it is with eternal appreciation that we honor you today for your efforts to continue to hold the door open. Thank you. And I would like to introduce Will and Martina O'Sullivan. By the way, Lila, another Irishman. <laughs> so, to each and every one of you, I want to say thank you so very much to Life Directions, to all that was involved, for the opportunity to have done the work that was so needed at the time in the lives of these young people. We're very honored and humbled to be here. I better put these on. <laughs> to celebrate with all of you 50 years, 50 years of work and accomplishment of life directions. It's a journey that has certainly taken many directions, and is filled with abounding memories. This organization continues to walk in hope and to walk in anticipation that the future of life directions will lead to creating a world as it should be. Celebrations of 50 years they're amazing. We inev inevitably go back to the beginning and we call out all of what's happened. We call out the joy, the challenges, and yes, even the miracles. In this instance of li life directions, we know with certainty that lives through the work through the process, has indeed transformed lives. Yes. And none of it would have been possible without the vision and commitment of Father Alex and Father John, Sister Rosalie, and with Alex and, and Judith McDonald. To each of you, what we owe is gratitude. What we commit is to continue to follow and be there. Tonight, we've got a board chair at was and is. Thank you, Tim. That was, I liked your speech. It wasn't long enough, though. Yeah. <laughs> but congratulations, certainly. Certainly, well, well done and well deserved. So we want to thank all of the board of directors, actually, for all their work, for carrying 
the mission and ensuring the viability of this organization for over 50 years. The staff, the volunteers, anyone who's been a part of this organization can truly know and understand what uniqueness is all about and how special this was. Your energy and support of this work is necessary and very appreciated. Will and I would not be here tonight if not for Father Robert Moran. As Kim said, he asked something of us that we had no idea what it would entail. Basically, he framed it in a way that we couldn't say no. And it has literally changed our lives as well. How, when do you ask someone in the second year of their marriage to be a part of a team to be with and walk with and ensure safety and trust to a group of, of teenagers? We had a one-year-old at the time, so that was a long way off, the teenagers. But it came, <laughs> and we were very, very grateful. So we said yes, knowing who Father Moran was, even though, as I said, it was, it was not clear what we were being asked. And yet, we knew that with this group of young people, as much as we were perhaps connected to each of them, that they had certainly connected with us. They came with joys and they came with challenges much too heavy. They were encouraged them to keep moving, to keep working toward change. And unexpectedly, they found that through the circle, as the group was called, was the safe place to face themselves and to face each other. So we, as being the couple along with the priests, gave ourselves and as a result came away with deepening of spirituality and strengthening, strengthening of our commitment to change, our commitment to justice, and our commitment to relationships. Beyond being there for the young people, this opportunity led to a strength of our own spirituality and our own togetherness. Our, our family certainly grew up with the principles of, of life search, life directions. So tonight, as we are excited and we are just really surprised, we accept this honor, but we accept it on behalf of Father Moran and on behalf of the circle who have given us more than they could ever imagine. We love you and thank you. He's got to have a turn. Yeah, another Irishman. So, as Martina and I continue to live out our eighth decade and begin our sixth decade together as a couple, as parents, and now happily as grandparents, the whole concept of lifetime achievement does have a wonderful, affirming ring to it. With that, our attitude tonight, yesterday, and tomorrow has to be an attitude of gratitude. We have so many blessings to count. We are grateful for our daughters, their husbands, and our grandsons. We are thankful tonight to be here with all of you who are here with such good purpose and intent. We are grateful for what we first knew as life search 
and now we know as Life Directions, which has been in Detroit, as has been mentioned a couple times, almost 50 years now. We are thankful for our beloved late pastor, spiritual director and friend, Father Bob Morant. And tonight we are especially grateful for Annette, Annette, Kim, Carl, Linda, Derek, Kevin, the Washingtons, and so many more young people who were in our circle, as well as young people who were forming communities all over the city of Detroit at that time. We, not Martina and I, we collectively, as a circle, as a team, created a circle of support and encouragement that thrived throughout our group's high school and college years, and actually into their first steps into their careers. During our life search, life directions journey, we all learned together to engage, to reflect, to listen, to articulate, to reconcile, to aspire, to pray, and to build community more fully. Our journey with that circle was a nine-year ascent, a climb, a climb stretching us all to be more thoughtful, forgiving, and lovingly intentional, and lovingly active. We were learning to understand that if you seek peace, you must work for justice. Okay, we're coming to the end, Tim. So here at, at home, here in Detroit, our hometown, it is always correct and right and just to call on some Motown poetry to draw us to conclusion. So I want you to imagine the Life Direction Choir. This is a choir of staff, of volunteers, of board members, and students all over the city. And I want you to imagine them singing, and you might want to help me out here at the end. Listen, people, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough, people, if you need us, call us, no matter where you are, no matter how far. Just call our name, we'll be there in a hurry. You don't have to worry, cause people there ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep us from getting to you. So, even Marvin and Tammy would encourage this. We hope and we trust that all of you will continue to support the efforts that are represented here tonight and this decades-long mission that is so purposeful, worthwhile, intentional, and loving. Thank you.